Hi guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. In this video, we will see the question Arithmetic Slices. A sequence of number is called arithmetic if it consists of at least three elements and if the difference between any two consecutive element is the same. So here the examples given in these are arithmetic sequences because we can see that the first one has a difference of 2 for all the consecutive elements. In the second one we have a difference of 0 for all the consecutive elements and in this one we have a difference of minus 4. And if you see this sequence it is not an arithmetic sequence because there are no three elements in this sequence that would have a common difference. A zero indexed array A consists of n numbers is given and a slice of that array is any pair of integers such that 0 is less than p, less than q and which is less than n. A slice of an array is called arithmetic if its subsequence is arithmetic. In particular, this means that p plus 1 is less than q. This condition should always satisfy so that the sequence can be called an arithmetic sequence. And now your function should return the number of such arithmetic slices in the array. We'll understand it better when we see an example. So let's see an example in a graphical manner. So let's take a bigger example like this. And here we can see that we can have two arithmetic slices, which are 1 to 6 and then 6 to 14, which has a difference of 2. Here the difference is of 1. So how many number of possible arithmetic slices can be created over here? These can be given by 10 for this particular sequence and 6 for this particular sequence and so in total we can have 16 arithmetic slices. How do we get this 10 and the 6 is the part we need to focus on. So let's take this example a smaller version from the one we have seen in the earlier slide and here we are taking this three numbers at once and finding the difference between the consecutive pairs. So this gives us a plus one difference and since this is equal we can say that this is a slice and so we add one in this particular array. So this is nothing but a dp array that we have taken and we'll keep on adding the arithmetic slice that we have found or else we can conclude the number of slices that could be possible by using the previous answer that we have got. So let's see how we can use the previous answer in this. If we go one step ahead, this also forms an arithmetic slice. And so we can say that one slice is possible with this. But now there was one slice that was possible with the previous one too. And so we can say that there can be a slice possible by taking into consideration all the elements present in the previous and current. That's the reason we do one from here and this one from the previous i minus one position i hope that this is clear why we are taking and how we are taking the i minus one position into consideration now let's move ahead in this example and here we can see that this gives us a one as a difference and this gives us four as a difference so this is not an arithmetic slice and so this remains zero moving forward again here we can see that the difference from four and eight is four but 8 and 10 is 2 and so this is not an arithmetic slice so we do nothing but 0 is our answer for this particular position also. Now we move ahead. Here we can see that the difference is same and so we do i minus 1 plus 1 from this particular position which gives us 1. Again as we move ahead this is also giving me an arithmetic slice with difference of 2 and so we can do 1 plus the 1 from i minus 1 position which gives me a 2. Now that we have come to the end, we can find the total from the dp array which would give me the total number of arithmetic slices that are possible which is 6 in this particular case. So now that we know this dp approach, let's go ahead and code it out. Then we'll see how we can optimize it or can we have a formula for this particular example. So as we have talked, we would need a dp array and this would be of the same length as a. After we have this, we also need a result variable which would be 0 and we loop starting from i equal to 2 so that we can take into consideration 3 numbers at a time. In here, we are checking whether the difference between these 
two consecutive pairs is same or not. If this is the case, we say that dp of i equal to 1 plus dp of i minus 1 as we discussed in our exam. And with this, we can also add it in our result. And finally, we return the result. Let's run this code and it's giving a perfect result. Let's submit this and it got submitted. And so the time complexity over here is O of n and the space complexity is also O of n as we are using a DP array. So now you can see that we only need the i minus 1 position in the DP. So can I change this DP array to just an integer variable? So over here this line would change from DP of i to DP and DP of i minus 1 to DP. This will also change to result plus dp. And now we also need to keep in mind that whenever we see a sequence that was not arithmetic, my dp was 0. So I need to set that in my else part. So that's it. Let's run this code. And it's giving a perfect result. Let's submit this. And it got submitted. So the time complexity over here remains the same. but the space complexity is reduced from O of n to O of 1. Now let's see if we can have a formula for this. So if you see this example closely over here for this particular sequence, the answer is summation from 1 to 4. And for this particular sequence, the answer is summation of 1 to 3. So how do I get this 4 and 3? This 4 and 3 can be found out by saying that okay i have a pair of three and how many pairs of three can i have so that would be given by the sequence that is there minus two or you can uh, play with the count variable in such a way that it just gives you four we would see that in our example or in our code when we are doing it so that's the whole logic behind the formula. If you know this, you do not have to add a particular number for every iteration, but you can just find how many different arithmetic sequences you have and what is the length of that arithmetic sequence or what is the count of the arithmetic slices of size equal to 3. And then from that, you can find the formula that is summation of n equal to 1 to n and f of n that is given by n into n plus 1 by 2. So here if you see n into n plus 1 by 2 if you substitute here then it would be 4 into 5 by 2 which gives us 20 divided by 2 that is 10 or even here if you see it would be 3 into 4 by 2 which is 12 by 2 which gives us 6. So now let's go ahead and code this problem so that you can understand it how we are deriving the count. So for that I'll need a count variable that would be 0. I'll also need a result variable. The for loop over here would remain the same and in here instead of this I'll have count plus plus whenever I'm getting the sequence that is continuing and if that is not the case my count gets reset to 0. After you reach a place wherein you are setting the count to 0 you also need to find out the value for the number of arithmetic slices you could have generated from the previous sequence and so my result would become result plus the formula that is count multiplied by count plus 1 and this is divided by 2. So let's take in the brackets carefully. This is all about the for loop but now you can also have a count that would be there if your arithmetic sequence was continuing till the end. So that part or that sequence would not have been counted earlier. So we would do that while returning this. So that would give us this and let's run this code and it is giving a perfect result. Let's submit this and it got submitted. So the time and space complexity remains same as in the better version of dp that we saw that is time remains o of n and space is o of 1. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you like the video and I'll see you in another great video. So till then keep learning and keep coding.